Hey everybody, this is Joe Joseph, and this is the DailySheeple.com's new shot. I've got something that people should be concerned about, and they should be concerned about this because this just validates to me the idea that there's a very good chance we're going to be seeing the United States play a major role in regime change under uh, President Trump. And the reason why I say that is because the Kagan family is back in town. And if you don't know who the Kagan family is, let me um, bring you up to speed on that. And ConsortiumNews.com uh, did a great article to highlight the dangers and what, what this represents. It says the Kagan family, America's neoconservative aristocrats, uh, aristocracy. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is awful. Has reemerged. Having recovered from the letdown over a not gain, a not gaining its expected influence through the election of of Hillary Clinton, and from its loss of official power at the start of the Trump presidency, but <clears throat> backing pontificating on, they, of course, they, what what happens when this happens, uh, folks? And you know, they lose, say, backing their candidate. Well, they have a hissy fit and a temper tantrum on the op-ed pages of. Places like the Wall Street Journal, et cetera, et cetera. And the Kagan family is um, very big in Washington politics. Now, the family Kagan is pushing for an expanded U.S. military invasion of Syria and baiting Republicans for not joining more enthusiastically in the anti-Russian witch hunt over Moscow's alleged helping in electing Donald Trump. In a Washington Post op-ed on March 7th, Robert Kagan, a co-founder of the Project for the New American Century, folks, PNAC. If you don't know what PNAC is, check it out. Project for a New American Century. They're the ones that predicted a new Pearl Harbor or needed a new Pearl Harbor to happen. They wrote about it in 1999 or so, 2000. Next thing you know, our new Pearl Harbor, September 11, 2001. That document that PNAC penned actually called for it and not a year, year and a half later, it happened. Kagan was a co-founder of PNAC. Of course, it was also a key architect of the Iraq war. And he jabbed at Republicans for serving as Russian accomplices, accomplices after the fact by not investigating more aggressively. Grr. And then there was Frederick Kagan, Kagan, the director of the, listen to these, listen to these think tanks. This is what really pisses me off. I mean, people just don't, I mean, ugh. director of the Critical Threats Project at the Neocon American Enterprises Institute, and listen to this, and his wife, Kimberly Kagan, president of her own think tank, Institutes for the Study of War. I wonder what their interest is. You know, they touted the bigger idea of a U.S. invasion of Syria. This in a Wall Street op-ed on March, on March the 15th. Yet as much standing as the Kagans retain an official Washington world of think tankery, they remain mostly outside the new Trump era power centers looking in, although they seem to have detected a door being forced open. And I'm telling you folks, it's going to happen. These people have a way of weaseling their way back into um, these high places of influence. And then they're able to peddle their way and uh, their ways and get this war. I mean, we have been, what, at peace for like 28 years? When's it going to stop? When are we going to say enough is enough? You know, that's the question that I have. And the fact that the Kagans are back in town just means that we need to be very, very watchful of what's going on in Washington, D.C. And where we are with foreign policy because like Donald Trump or not, I think you got a guy that's pretty naive when it comes to um, foreign policy and who has his ear. So just something to be aware of the, <laughs> the co-founder of PNAC. No bueno, no good. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's new shot, and I'll have one again for you real soon. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.